Welcome back. Today, we will use the CLI to continue working with the example SQL Mesh project we created in the last video. Last time, we followed the instructions in our Quick Start docs to install SQL Mesh, create an example project, and create the project's production environment. Therefore, we can skip the first two steps on the CLI page and jump straight into updating a model. Remember, a model contains the SQL query we use to generate our data assets. Now it's time to switch back to our terminal and our example folder. Let's open the model we want to change. I will open the incremental model.sql file. The file begins by specifying metadata about the model, including its name, kind or type, start date, on frequency, and columns. The model itself has three columns, ID, item ID, and DS, selected from the upstream seed model. The model is incremental by time, and the DS column contains the date associated with each record. The model query filters time between start DS and end DS, which are variables that SQL Mesh fills in when it runs the model. Using the SQL Mesh command fetch DF in the terminal, we can query this model and get an idea of what the data looks like before we have made any changes. Now I am going to create a new column. Moving back to the SQL file, I can insert a column named new column that contains the value Z. I save this file, and then back in my terminal, we can run the command SQL Mesh plan dev to make a new environment named dev for the change. I will pause here for a quick explanation of how SQL Mesh works. Let's look at a generic project you might have. You have local model files that you're working on. Then there are the different environments that your team has. In this generic example, let's say environments 1 and 2. We use the plan command when you want to compare your local changes to these different environments. You can make as many changes as you want in an update. In this example, environment 1 needs to be updated from a float to an integer, and we need to add a missing file in environment 2. In our particular example, we have our local models and our production environment with all of our model versions that we created from the last video. Now we are making a change to some model versions locally, and we want to add those new model versions to a separate dev environment. We do that by running SQL Mesh Plan Dev. Once we are happy with the changes we made, we can update our production environment from the dev environment by running SQL Mesh Plan. Okay, back to our terminal so we can run this ourselves. We can see that this has run the project's data unit test against our DuckDB database. SQL Mesh has automatically picked up the changes in the model where we added the column and its downstream table full model, which is indirectly modified by this change. We get a preview of the changes in our model, and below that, SQL Mesh has correctly identified this as a non-breaking change because it doesn't invalidate any data already in our table. This all looks good in our change summary, and the last thing is to apply the plan via the backfill prompt. Remember from last time, Backfilling our data will apply the plan and run it. Sometimes we work with huge tables that take a long time to run. Since we're just testing the changes to our models, we don't need all the data and we don't want to wait for everything to run. To move quicker, we can choose to run the model for a small window of time to preview the results. We would specify that time window with the backfill start and end dates. In this case, our project is tiny, so we can backfill for this entire history. We will hit enter at each prompt to backfill it entirely and then enter Y to apply the plan. I'm just gonna clear the terminal output so we can see the next steps a bit better. Okay, let's use SQL Mesh Fetch DF to find out what our table looks like now in our dev environment. Our new column is there. If we compare that to what's in prod, we will see our changes have not been applied yet. Again, once we're happy with our changes in our dev environment, we can run the SQL Mesh plan without the dev, just like we did in the last video, to promote our changes to our production environment. This time at the bottom, we see that SQL Mesh has automatically detected this is a virtual update. We have already done all the work computing this change in dev. So instead of redoing the computations or rebuilding our database from scratch, we can use the power of virtual data environments to do a simple pointer swap in the production environment, instantly and safely updating our production with the latest data, knowing exactly what we will get in production because we already have it in dev. It's just that fast. I can already show you the updated prod table by fetching it one last time, and voila, 
our new column is there. This time, we learned about virtual data environments and their power to help you safely, effectively, and efficiently make SQL changes.